Hi, this is Mike Lopez, and in this video, we're going to be looking at graphical and polar signals. Let's first of all look at graphical signals. What do we mean by these things? Okay, let's draw some axes. Here we are. Um, let's draw in a time axis. Let's have some voltage, plus V, minus V here. Here's our origin, put a zero in there. And why don't we draw a standard sine wave along these axes? Okay. And what we can say about this sine wave is that it has a positive peak value of one and a negative peak value of minus one. So this is a standardized sine wave. Okay, and we can just indicate here, this is the sine of t. In fact, it's one times the sine of t. So if this thing was um, 10 volts uh, peak value, it would be 10 sine t. Get the idea? Okay, and maybe we could also draw a cosine. Let's have a look at that. Or in a cosine wave. Let's label all of these points here. That's v minus V. Um, a cosine starts high, so cosine goes high, goes through low, and back to where it started up here. Okay, so in each representation, you know, we have a 360 degrees um, traversal through time until we get back to the starting point. So a sine wave starts low here, and a cosine wave starts high. Let's put in that, a cos of t. Okay, now what if you were to get hold of this sine wave here, freeze the whole thing, and then move it over to the left until comes to this axis here. What you've actually done there is you've got hold of the whole sine wave and you've moved it, advanced it by 90 degrees. Don't forget, here's 90 degrees. This bit here is 180 degrees. That's 270. And of course here is 360. So the idea is why don't we try to drag the sine wave to the left until it looks very much like this thing here, a cosine. And yeah, all you need to do is to say a cosine, or well, cos of t, is equal to a sine wave, which has got t in there, and it's also got some angle information, plus 90 degrees. Okay, so a cosine is a sine wave which has been advanced by 90 degrees. All right, what if we were not looking at 90 degrees but we were maybe looking at other angles? Maybe we could have a look at, um, let me just scroll down a little bit, let's have a look at another set of axes down here and We'll put time in there. Um, maybe we started off with something like this. Okay, so what are we looking at here? Well, maybe we could change to green here, mark these axes in for you. This angle here is meant to represent uh, 45 degrees. Okay, so what we've done with this particular sine wave is we've moved it left by 45 degrees. And arbitrarily, maybe we could also mark this thing in and say, well, we don't always need sine waves to be um, a peak value of one. So maybe we could have here plus 20 
in any of that would be minus 20 volts there as well plus V <coughs> minus V okay so how would we express this well this thing is going to be 20 it's certainly a sine wave so it's T plus or minus it's going to be plus 45 degrees okay and in the next video you know we'll be trying to discard um, degrees um, in, in terms of expressing angles and we prefer to use radians but you know that's for the next video so a nice simplistic way of saying is this angle here is 45 degrees so we've advanced the sine wave so this is a lead if we were to start off, start off with a, a natural sine wave and move it to the right rather than the left then that would be a lag and in that case you would have a minus in here and then that would be a lag okay <clears throat> this particular graphical representation of a signal it can be represented um, we know it's a sine wave of course so it can be represented by a magnitude okay so what is this height here it's 20 what is this angle here it's 45 so we could actually draw let's change to red we could draw the thing as this and we indicate this vector has a magnitude or a length of 20 but it also has change some colors here it also has an angle which we know to be 45 degrees so this is an alternative way to represent our time varying signal here that you may may possibly see on an oscilloscope screen okay so we have a what we call a polar representation of the same signal and what we can do with this polar representation is we can say ah okay so if I complete the triangle like so so I have this triangle here and then I can work out what is the vertical component so the vertical component some basic Pythagoras on here so we're trying to find what is this height here um, and as you know from your school days it's going to be that hypotenuse there which of course is 20 times the sine of 45 which should give us 14.14 volts uh, by the same token then the horizontal component is quite simply 20 times the cos of 45 degrees which again gives us 14.14 volts okay good let's have a look at some points in a magnetic field okay so another example points in a magnetic field and what I'd like to do in this example is I'm going to draw point A here and point B up here there they are and they're in this magnetic field <coughs> um, which we could actually draw uh, some light color maybe a light green we could have a magnetic field maybe that's you know doing this sort of idea okay and you're trying to analyze what's happening between two particular points possibly um, on some sort of stator or rotor or whatever it might be that's inside that field and what we're trying to do is to determine what is 
was really badly drawn. Maybe I should control Z that and start again. What is this distance between these two points, given that we know their locations um, within the field? So what we're saying is, yeah, we know this and we know this. And in this example, why don't we use five centimeters for that height and 10 centimeters for this width here? OK, so what we'd like to do is to express some length, L, and some angle phi. And that angle phi is going to be there. And this length here is that hypotenuse. And again, it's just basic Pythagoras. So we're going to write in L squared equals 5 centimeters squared plus 10 centimeters squared. Therefore, L is the root of the right-hand side. So it's the root of five. We know the centimeters. We can just miss those out for the moment. Five squared plus 10 squared. Okay. And if you do all the sums on that lot, you get L equals 11.18. And we put the units back in to 11.18 centimeters. And an easy way to work out that angle is the angle equals tan to the minus one of the vertical over the horizontal, so five over ten, which is not 0.5, of course. So do that on your calculator, and you should have 26.57 degrees. OK, and then you can work out a few um, examples uh, in your head on some scrap paper um, just to convince yourself that you've mastered these um, um, magnitudes and angles here. Um, OK, so see you in the next video.